What's up guys, welcome to the channel. Today, we've got an interesting truck to unbox. Some of you, quite a few of my subscribers, might recognise what this is. I want to say styled on, but it's more than likely a complete clone of said product, <clears throat> Tamiya Highlift. Uh, but we're going to get out of the box, we're going to have a look at it, give it a run. There's a link for it in the description and it is only $200. I'm going to say only $200 because the similar truck that you can get from Tamiya is about $400, I believe. Anyway, so have a look on the box, then we're going to get it out of the box, have a really good look over it, and then we're going to take it for a run. So a free speed transmission, uh, they look like, might be plastic gears in there, gives you the gear ratios there, uh, low, second and top. Uh, ESC separate receiver so it's um like fully hobby grade shock absorbers rubber tires it says battery on there but i believe you don't get a battery with it i'm pretty sure it says no battery provided uh, and it is a middle east 4x4 pickup i don't think it's a rally car though uh, so it comes in like a desert camo and a normal camo they also do a black and a white version i'll leave links to all of them in the description looks like it's got metal gears in the axles says friction damper but then it also says o-ring so uh, you might find that you can put oil in them uh, details there of the size four steering modes this one's got four wheel steer with 540 motor 160 amp brushed esc 2.4 gig uh, transmitter six kilogram servo three speed transmission let's get this thing out of the box and have a proper look so it comes pretty well packed in uh, polystyrene and a nice box and it did actually come the box was within a box as well and it got shipped so it seems we've got here nearly all in one piece the rear number plate has fallen off it looks like it just does it just clip on yeah it looks like it just clips on and you can see the indicator lens has just popped out but i think Yeah, it just fits in there. Um, I was going to put a bit of glue on it, but it looks like it's staying. We'll keep an eye on that. I don't want to lose it while we're out and about. But yeah, it comes pretty well packed. So you can um, order these and don't worry about them being uh, used as footballs like some of the stuff is that comes over from China. This one seems right. And most of the HG stuff I've got in the past has always come pretty well boxed. Right, what else do you get in the box? You get a load of accessories. These look like uh, you got like a first aid kit box. That says important SOS, but it looks like a uh, a picnic, like a cool like a cool box that you take on a picnic. You got fuel cans and another like red box as well. They all sit in the back. Uh, nice one temp scale accessories. You got your wing mirrors. They are metal. That looks good. Oh, they look like metal. Yeah, wing mirrors, wipers, some tools, your usual stuff, and some zip ties. Bare steering links by the look of it. That looks like some kind of servo adapter. Maybe that's for your four wheel steer, although it looks like it's already connected. But anyway, some spares, a couple of guns. Looks like a sniper rifle, and I don't know what the other one is. I'm not an expert. And then also a few more little supplies there. Instructions, some decals to go on it. You got your Toyato um, stickers there very clever all you got to do is swap a couple of letters around and you can make it a toyota your standard hg or hengguan or whatever they're called hg transmitter steering jaw rate steering trim steering modes the lights that indicate it there steering trim and then your uh, three speed gearbox is selected like that these aren't too bad i'm not too keen on them because i can't drive one-handed with them but um not too bad overall. And then this is the truck. I'm going to take the tissue off the wheels and then we'll have a closer look at it. Here it is. And I'll be honest with you, I hope you can see on, uh, I've got my better camera to show you it a bit more close up. It actually looks really nice. I think it needs a bit of weathering. I think it needs a bit of weathering on here, make this uh, a little bit more realistic, but it does look very nice i'm sure there's going to be some mixed um feelings about this definitely the clone i had the tundra version um from tamir a little while ago 
So I can vaguely remember what it was like. And this is definitely the same. But I must say, it does look pretty good. So the only thing I don't like about the high lift is the amount of space. Well, it's not so much the amount of space. It's a high lift. So it's, you know, it's got that body lift. The wheels are just too small. You need to change the wheels. And that's something I am going to do. Obviously, in this video, we're just going to take it out, give it a run. And I'm going to we're going to take the body off in a minute and have a look at the chassis. But um, I'm going to take it out and run on these wheels. However, I will put slightly bigger wheels on it just to give it a bit of a better look because I don't really like it. They need to be a little bit wider. They need to come out a little bit more and it needs to be a little bit. It needs to just fill the arches just a little bit more. Now, I don't remember my Tundra having suspension quite as soft as this. I'm pretty sure mine was quite stiff, whereas this feels pretty good. It's not got loads of articulation because they never did have loads of articulation, but Oh, I've just noticed we've got a uh, bit of chrome missing off the exhaust there as well. I have to look in the box for that because I didn't see it. Hopefully we can find that. Um, but yeah, not the most amount of articulation, but it certainly feels better than what my Tamiya one did. I'm going to have a look at these shocks, uh, see if we can put some oil in, uh, see if it makes it a little bit more uh, smooth on that suspension because it is a bit bouncy as you can see. Right, let's remove the body. I think you need to undo the hex bolts on the top. Let's remove the body and let's have a look underneath at the chassis. So a bolt on the hex bolt on the front, two on the rear and then two each side and your body comes off. And then as we look underneath, there you go. There's your uh, front metal bumper. That needs tightening. It's a bit loose, let's tighten them up. Uh, your shocks, even the same color. Uh, front mount there, there's your 540 motor with heat sink, uh, 160 amp ESC. Looks like it's got little tabs there to switch between LiPo and nickel metal hydride. Dean's connector, like I said, doesn't come with a battery. I'll be using my Gen's Ace 4000 milliamp hour ones. These should, they're kind of the right size for a Tamiya, so it should fit in there. Ladder frame chassis, which is metal. Shocks on the rear, not really much else to talk about on the top there. Let's flip it over and look underneath. And then underneath, we've got front axle there, metal drive shafts, your little um, skid plate, rear drive shaft, uh, and then your rear axle. Been a few years since I had my Tundra, so I can't remember. The axles, they were quite big anyway from what I remember, but these are definitely uh, quite large. So your steering servo for the rear steer is just tucked away in there and you've got a little link that goes to, I think I showed you, there's a spare one there. Little link goes to that, that's for your rear wheel steering. And you've got two servos up front. One of them is your gear selector and one of them is your front steering. I've got a battery charged. Let's put a battery in. Let's put some batteries in the transmitter and let's just see how it operates. So quick release little um, battery cover here and this battery, slides beautifully in there and um, the only issue is which i found with these batteries don't go on very well but this one you can just about i want to say force it over but it will go over right so the transmitter is on steering seems a bit weak is the dual rate down that is the question yes it was dual rate was right down so steering quite noisy uh, that looks like we're in, well, I want to say middle gear. <laughs> but that's definitely high. That's definitely high gear. And then we select the middle one on the controller, and then last one. So that's low gear. So low, uh, medium, high. Right, steering. So normal steering. Press the mode button. Now we've got four wheel, normal four wheel, them rear ones move loads. It's gonna be fun. Uh, press it again. This one should be crab, maybe. Yeah, so that turns the wheels the same way. Uh, that's really funny when you do that. And then the final one should just be rear steer. There we go. What an awesome little feature they've put on this. That is something that didn't come as stock with the high lift. Right, let's put it back into normal. So battery's charged, it works, it seems all right. The gearbox is a little bit noisy. Those that have owned these or seen these before will know that the high lift or the, the same chassis as the high lift, you know, like the Tundra and the others, they were never all that good really um, because of the ground clearance. There's not much ground clearance. They're okay as trail trucks, 
but you know any big sort of climbing rocks or anything they quite easily ground down so we finally got a break in the weather it has been horrible today but i didn't want to bring it out um it's all right bringing it out in the wet but i wanted to wait until it at least stopped raining so i'm gonna give this its first run gonna go over in that direction away from where the road is so we don't get as much traffic noise uh, we're powered up we're in second gear we're one two three and i'm in second so sort of in the middle gear and uh, let's see how it gets on just front wheel steering at the moment like i mentioned these weren't known for their ground clearance and their crawling capability oh I didn't even think about that. It's not got lock diffs. I didn't even think about that. No lock diffs. Now that is going to be a problem. <laughs> I wasn't really paying attention when I was reading the box, but they are, uh, yeah, open diffs. We might be all right, but it's definitely gonna cause um, issues with climbing up stuff. At the end of the day, it's not a massive issue, but um, it's certainly, Something I'm going to do is lock them because situations like this. I let it off, it made it through there. I didn't think it was going to be. But anyway, in situations where you need a bit of traction, it's definitely handy to uh, have all four wheels turning. So something like this should be pretty simple to uh, get over. And there's your ground clearance issue as well. The switch is a low gear now. Um, definitely a lot more control in low gear. Uh, but I don't think it's going to uh, help it much. I mean, look, we're stuck on a flat. We're stuck on a little flower. It actually keeps slipping out of the gear, so it might need a little bit of adjustment. It's okay if you select it out and then back in. It's good to go, but every now and then it slips out. That is what she said. I don't want to make this sound bad, because, um, I mean, at the end of the day, we're in high gear now. At the end of the day, the Tammies are never all that good anyway. Oh, a shoot. A few scratches, but we'll be all right. Forgot we got four wheel steering. <laughs> well, at least it's fun to do that with. It's not controllable four wheel though. Whoa. Watch this for a turning circle though. And then if you want a bit of comedy. And then just rear wheels. I mean, the rear wheel steer on this isn't too bad. Um, on some stuff, it's actually reduced, but this looks all right. Anyway. I think what we need to do with this, I'm gonna lock the diffs. This definitely needs the diffs locked. I'm gonna lock the diffs, change the tires, and then we're gonna take it out on a proper run. Hope you enjoyed that video, guys. That is all. Cheers for watching. I'm gonna do some four-wheel steer donuts in the mud now. I'll see you next time.